So this lab quest is going to be a demonstration of Seldinger technique of percutaneous line insertion and also percutaneous cannulation. How we're going to do this is we're going to have a series of two styrofoam cups, one inside the other one. We're going to tape it. The opening is going to simulate our lumen of our vessel and the outside cup is going to simulate the skin. The inside cup is going to simulate our vessel that we're going into, our percutaneous insertion into the vessel. This is obviously going to be a lot easier to hit our vessel than it's going to be if we're going into our femoral artery or our femoral vein. Then we're going to have to use a little bit more technique, a little bit more feeling. In this case, we're going to feel, you're going to feel the inside of that cup when we, uh, when we push down on that. But basically everywhere where we go into the cup, we're going to hit the vessel. So, so that just keep in mind, be cognizant of the fact that that's going to be a little bit different. So this is our vessel. We're going to take, uh, in this case, a Medtronic Biomedicus cannula, a 21 French Biomedicus cannula. We're going to take it out. Now, this is a really long cannula. Arterial or venous? Venous. Venous, right? Because we need to go from the femoral vein all the way up into the heart. The arterial cannula is a little bit shorter. Uh, it can be different French sizes, different sizes and everything, depending on what you want in vessel size and patient size. The only difference between the arterial and the venous cannula, besides the cannula length, is going to be the length of the guide wire. Because we need a longer guide wire to put in a femoral venous cannula to go all the way up to the heart than if we're just going into the vessel itself. So, some of these cannulas come with a percutaneous kit. Sometimes you, you get the cannula separate, it just has a dilator in it. You have to open up a separate percutaneous kit. Edward makes a PIKA percutaneous arterial, PIKV percutaneous venous kit. The only difference is going to be the length of the guide wire is going to be longer in that femoral kit. So, if you're cannulating arterial and venous, you only need to use one kit. But which kit do you need to use? Venus. The venous. venous. Because if you use the arterial, the line's not going to be, the wire's not going to be long enough to cannulate the venous cannula. So in, in our case here today, we are going to open up a Medtronic venous cannula. Uh, tomorrow when we do this lab quest, we want to keep all of this stuff intact. We want to keep this so that we can use this cannula again for a similar function and purpose, either whether it's in lab quest or whether we do one of our pigs and percutaneously cannulate, we want to keep this together for the most part. So. This is going to be opened to the field sterilely, like we talk about, the, cir the uh, circulator, or we will open that up. The scrub tech or the nurse who scrubbed in is going to take this and put it on their field. The rest of this is going to get thrown away, but we're going to keep it for now. They're going to open this on their sterile field. It's just a plastic pop pack. They are going to open that very gracefully like that, keep everything together, and then this is going to be the procedure. I want to make sure you guys can see what we're doing and the way this kit works. So here's our patient. Now here's going to be the process. We're the, generally this is going to be a surgeon, but if we're putting an art line in or somebody is going to be putting an art line in using Seldinger technique, this is going to be the way it works. The first thing they'll do, generally, is they will try to find the vessel with their fingers. The artery is going to be easier to find because it's going to be pulsing than the venous, but everywhere in your body you have vein, artery, and nerve, right? So they're going to be close. So once they've located, once they've located, say in this case, the femoral vein, they are going to use a blade and they're going to use, make a small incision in the skin. Make sure you can see this and, and get what I'm doing so tomorrow you guys can see that. So they're going to use the blade that comes in. They're going to make a small skin incision. That's going to be what they're going to do the access. They're going to stop the bleeding, make sure there's just a small incision on that with the blade. Be really careful with the blade. The next thing they're going to do this kit comes with a needle. 
It may come with a syringe too. If you put a syringe on that, you can use any syringe. It's just a lure lock. A syringe allows you to go in and withdraw blood. If it's a vein, you can see the difference in color. You can also see if it's an artery, it's gonna bleed back. You can also just use the needle itself because we've made an incision in that skin. You're gonna go into that incision this way with that needle. Obviously, we're gonna hit it here every single time. But in this case, they may be feeling. They're gonna put that needle in. Now notice, I'm not going in completely perpendicular. I'm going in at an angle. Why do I wanna go in at an angle? Last thing I wanna do is go in straight like this and go right through the vessel, right? So we wanna go in at an angle. We wanna go bevel down so the bevel goes up, angles up. We don't wanna go like this. We want that bevel to go up. We want to put that needle in into our vessel. Now here we can obviously see, because we can see when the needle goes in, in a normal vessel, we can't, we can't see when that needle goes in. But what we're gonna get is either a slow bleed back, if it's venous, of dark blood, or a spouting bleed back if it's arterial, right? You can also put a syringe on there if, if you're having trouble and you can feel when you go in and you can draw the blood back. You don't waste a lot of blood, but somebody that's really good at this, they go in right away and they can feel it. This needle has the ability to be tied down if you wanna leave that needle in there for any reason. See that? There, the ability, you can suture that to the skin. So there is the first thing. The first thing is the needle. The second thing is a wire that comes with this. Now, the wire usually has a curve on it. That is the side that is going to go into the vessel. The reason that wire is curved is to allow uh, the practitioner to move around different, um, different angles and things depending on where they go. There is a little blue part of the dilator that pushes down that will straighten that out. See how that straightens that out? So that's what we're gonna use. We are gonna take that wire back to where we've taken that curve out Sometimes this wire is in this plastic guard that just basically helps keep that wire organized. It's not essential because that wire is going to have a curve. We're going to keep that wire straight. While we're feeling that, we're going to thread that wire down into our needle and through into the vessel. See how that works? So now this is going down into the vessel, wherever that vessel is going, in this case, a femoral line. We're gonna go all the way in. I'm gonna need an assistant. Liz, you wanna come here and you, be, you wanna be my assistant to help with the wire? Sure. So once we get that wire threaded, we're gonna go ahead and take this all the way off. Go ahead and take that all the way off. And then Liz, hold this wire. So now I'm acting like the surgeon and I am going to go and now Liz is going to thread a certain dilator in a series of dilators. So where we are now going to, now that we have the wire threaded, we can take all of this out, take the needle out. Now all of this, Liz, you're gonna take that, be really careful with it, take all of that out and off the wire. And I'll just take it and put it back in this up so we, so we have it. Now we have just the wire in our vessel, right? So now we are gonna go, in these kits comes a series of these blue dilators. All those are used for, so Liz is gonna grab that. She's gonna put this over the wire, kind of like threading a, threading a needle. Do it. I, I it's, it's hard to maintain. It's hard to maintain the wire and everything. So she'll, so the assistant will thread this and hand this to the surgeon. He will work it down. He will go through the same hole. He will go through. He'll just go back and forth a couple times to dilate that hole, to make that hole a little bit bigger. Then he will take that dilator off. The assistant will grab the next size up of dilator, a little bit bigger. She'll thread that one. 
the same process goes for insertion of a balloon pump, uh, a femoral line, in this case, cannula. She will give me that dilator. Again, we'll dilate that hole now to, the, to a little bit larger size. Now this, comes with a, a white dilator. And it looks like uh, the biggest dilator in the cannula. So here comes the last dilator before the cannula. So this would be about a similar size to the cannula. Each one gets a little bigger and a little bigger. Now, one thing we wanna make sure, and when we're doing this process, is not pull our wire out. So we wanna make sure that that wire stays all the way down the vessel. Because if the wire comes out, we have to start the process all over again. Now, the, this dilator goes through that hole. Each time you can feel it is a little bit harder to push through as it dilates that hole in the vessel. Meanwhile, the whole time when this vessel is in, I'm keeping some pressure on that. I'm keeping some pressure. So when we stop dilating, I kind of clamp that vessel down so it's not bleeding. The last one, Liz, just hold that for one second. I'm gonna, I didn't put the dilator into the cannula. So the last dilator may be a really long dilator. Why? Because the cannula is long, correct? So that dilator is long and goes into the cannula. So now Liz, Liz will have had this all ready to go. And we'll hand Now she will thread the cannula. And this is a, there's a communication process here, saying, all right, dilator two, dilator three. We're ready for the cannula. So now we've got the wire threaded all the way into our right atrium through our femoral vein. This is why we need that long guide wire because when the cannula is re really long, we need to be able to have enough wire that it comes through, all right, through the cannula. So now Liz has got a hold of that wire. Now the dilator goes into our vessel. Now remember when we talked about cannulas and things like that, they have all these different markers, the little black markers that tell us how far we're in and it has holes all up and down the cannula. So we can then thread that up the dilator, up in through our vessel, all the way in to where the marker says, okay, now based on this patient size, we are in the right atrium, maybe a little bit further. We advance to, okay, now we're collecting blood just into the SVC, the right atrium and the IVC. Now, Liz will pull that last dilator out. I'm gonna be ready with a clamp right here. When she pulls the wire and the dilator out, I clamp this cannula, connect our line, our venous line, and now we're cannulated the femoral venous line. Did you see how that series of dilators went? That was percutaneous using the Seldinger technique, percutaneous cannulation. So now tomorrow, you guys are gonna practice this. You can go anywhere you want to around the cup. We have several different cups. We'll create this, this series, and you guys are gonna practice that using a partner, two, two or three people, practice that. And then once you have that cannula all the way in, they will tack that down along the leg so that it doesn't move. So they'll use a suture, they'll use like almost a purse string suture. They'll tack that down and that cannula will be in place down the lumen of the vessel. Sound good?